There's the state of consciousness, and then there's the state of assuming. Most of the time, most of us spend our time in assuming. Meaning, if you're not deliberately aware before mind, if you're not aware before your thoughts, if you're not aware of yourself as before thought, if you're not aware of that sense of I am, at the least, before thought, that stability, that changeless essence, that sense of the core within you, if we're not absorbed in that, if we're not aware of that, if we're not operating firmly from that, we are in a state of assuming, grosser assuming, even being identified with the I am is still assuming. But comparatively to everyday life, it's not as much. It's not the gross assuming, it's a subtler form of assuming. We'll get into that in a little bit. So on a day-to-day -day moment, we're so often engaged on automatic pilot. We respond to stimuli that we then assume have real independent existence. Like the cashier lady at Whole Foods. Or the gas station that you need to get to. You assume it's real, you assume it's there, so you go drive your car and you get gas. Practical thinking, nothing wrong with it. But it has a lot of fundamental assumptions underneath that we don't even realize that we're having. But those are not the ones that usually bother us. Those are just expressions of being in the state of assumption. The ones that bother us is mainly the assumption of me in relationship to others. Who are you? Who are you? But an assumption. Before the assumption, with a heightened state of clarity and awareness, who are you then? When you're in a state of less assuming, in other words, more awareness, less mind, more hereness, if you will, more clarity, Oh, the assumptions of a world out there start to fade, start to dissipate, start to soften, or even disappear altogether. Because, have you ever noticed how world only arises simultaneous with mind? World only appears simultaneous with thought. The sense of a world, the sense of an independently existent soup of objects, aka world, only arises when we think along those lines, when we assume along those lines. The more we increase, heighten our awareness of awareness, or our awareness of being, if you will, the more we take away the fuel the mind needs to assume that things have independent existence. I'll repeat that. The more awareness we turn up onto itself, the more we turn up the brightness on awareness, on existence, consciousness, bliss, on being, on I am, before I think I am, the wordless I am, the more aware we are of the fact that we know that we are before we think anything. We are in profound direct experiential or at least intuitive contact with that I am before words. We suck the energy out of mind. The mind starts to come our way. It starts to merge with the I am. It starts to disappear into the I am. As soon as that starts to happen, even just a little bit, and we could simply call this the quieting of the mind, the natural dissolving or quieting of mind. What happens is that we no longer feel a world is as real and tangible as we thought it was a minute ago. 
And with that, our worries go, our concerns go, our self-image goes, our striving goes, our efforting goes. Have you experienced this before? Can you experience this now? Intuit this at the least? So when we turn the brightness up on being, we turn the brightness down on the world. When we turn the brightness up on the world, we turn the brightness down on being. Usually this is what happens. Now there is a simultaneity that can occur, but really what happens is that we turn the brightness up on being while we allow the I am to interact with its world. But then we're not fooled by the assumption of independent existences. And it is much more, more and more, with pr more practice, you gain more perks, you gain more abilities, you gain more freedom. And so it is more and more like allowing the dream to dream itself. And it feels much more like a dream. It's much, much harder to suffer when you feel the world is not real. In fact, when you feel the world is completely unreal, there's nothing but bliss pervading your experience. And if we are to believe the emotional guidance system, then something about that must be true. Because it feels so good. So when you start trusting what feels truly, truly profoundly good, let's call it bliss, over reasoning, logic, and the people that delivered you into this world and then taught you the way of the world. When we start to believe our most inner guidance more than we believe or put faith into the illusion of this world and its fake scientists and its fake archaeologists and its fake everyone and its fake parents and its fake friends and fake everyone, fake spiritual teachers and everything. When we stop investing faith in others and start listening to that profound sense of resonance that when we turn brightness down on the sense of an external world, by turning the brightness up on the inner sense of I am, or even farther, the I, I, or even farther, the transcendence of both, all, the world starts to disappear from view. We are starting to naturally ignore all acts of seeing. Experiencer, experiencing an experience, subject and object starts to disappear and we feel this inner breath of fresh air, this cleansing happens. Have you experienced that? Where you feel like you can breathe again? Like you're home again? Like you're in contact with spirit or however you want to call it? Like hallelujah, like God is here, like whatever where what previously concerned you and covered you and clouded you and made you tense suddenly leaves you, it's suddenly no longer real and you're like, relief, there's a big sigh of relief followed with bliss, peace, love, light, clarity, abundance, generosity. You were in a mode of consuming because you believed, you assumed you were real and the objects you had to protect yourself from were real. Now that you're in the state of God, or at least the individual God, which is the I am, the soul state, is the I am that I am. The universal soul state or the God state is the I before I am, intuiting that vast, indescribable light which pervades all things yet sees no world, creates all appearances yet in its own natural state. God does not know world. It only knows itself because that's all that there is. World does not have existence apart from the isness of God, of I, I. Only I is. Everything else is but a thought borrowing the power to project itself as form from the light, the isness of that innermost, formless I. But as aware as you are of this now, you were not an hour ago, correct? So something is happening by the power of meditation, by the power of contemplation, by the power of, call it satsang, if you will, 
by the power of being together in the name of the one infinite creator, in devotion to the one infinite creator, in acknowledgement of the one infinite creator, both in its state as God, as free will, as awareness, love, light, or existence, consciousness, bliss. <laughs> as well as knowing somehow that it has a statelessness beyond its first state that is absolute, that is infinite, that is without not only form but also without quality. It has not even the quality of being, it's beyond being. So the one infinite creator, both as its original native absolute statelessness as well as its state as God, as the expression of it's creation, love light. We come together in the name of that, in devotion to that, because we do not generally have the environment in our everyday lives to support that recognition. Was our planet, our society, our civilization set up in a different way? Was it at a different level of its evolution? Then you could go about your everyday life and be reminded naturally that this is what is true. But that's not the case. We idolize that which does not exist. Things, objects, sensations, bodies, pleasure versus pain. And so we need a container, we need a space, we need a dedicated, intentional space to come together for you to have profound experiences, profound direct contact with God as yourself. And sure, we can talk about empowerment kind of stuff as well, but that's out there anyway. And you're already in the world so much. So my priority, at least for season one of the self-realization school is to actually realize yourself. Makes sense, right? So let's have that be the foundation. Let's have the foundation be that we know very clearly those different deeper levels of God in our own direct experience so that going into everyday life, we can at least maintain a profound intuitive recognition of it, if not direct experience moments infused into our everyday illusory lives. Okay.